Right, good afternoon guys. Welcome back to our training. Here's training. This is uh, today we are going to do uh, a little bit of animation. So in our classroom, I have already posted a uh, simple 12 principles of animation in the material so you can see it in the stream by itself. Yeah, so timeline basics. So before we do any timeline basic, I'll also update today's recording later after class. Once I upload it to YouTube, I'll just do, uh, you know, post it here as well. So you can see the illusion life. Uh, there is a principles of animation just for you to get to know how the animation works. All right. So this will come handy before we even start our cinema graph. All right. So uh, this is the road path that we are going to take for our cinema graph. So before we do any cinema graph or any sort of animation, we want to look at what are the possibilities and what can we create with simple animation in Photoshop, right? So animation is something that is moving, so which has a motion, that is what is called as animation, right? So uh, as you have uh, you know load your Photoshop. All right after you upload your Photoshop once you pick up any size of document uh, you know size and so on um, once you have done that you have an option yeah where you go to the windows and click on timeline so that you get to this tiny little window or drop down menu yeah so timeline drop down menu so timeline is where you can start creating um, you know animation by frames it's like uh, each and every pages that you have on a simple book yeah so what it does is it will tell you each and every uh, it will give you the options yeah for each and every frames or every pages that you flip it will have its own motion and its own you know uh, animation that is happening within that right so there's two options yeah so as you have already uh, click on timeline if it tap on this by default it won't have if you click on timeline under windows timeline you'll get this window here popping up at the bottom you can always undock it and dock it so with you just leave it as a default this dock it here yeah so here they have two options create frame animation and create video timeline so for today we're going to look at create frame animation rather than going for video timeline i'll talk about video timeline next week so today we're going to do a simple bouncing ball and how do you want to do it is by first choosing frame animation and create a frame animation the moment you hit on create frame animation you will see a tiny little thumbnail that appears here with a zero second all right so what it says here is one is to is to tell you that this is the layer that you're working on which will be representing as a page to your book so column yeah and then you've got the second here the second is to tell you how fast is that animation is going to move or how fast a motion is going to transit from one frame to another right so for now please ignore this uh, zero second here but just for you to understand this is for its motion right it's training so if you are looking back at the animation here you've got other options i'm just going to uh, explain to you what it is uh, around this timeline what do you get here so number one if you look down here you've got this tiny little bar yeah an icon here convert to video timeline this do not press it now you do it later after we have done the keyframes right and then you've got another drop down menu where it uh, states forever so beside the forever there's a tiny little drop down uh, you know uh, arrow here if you tap on it it will ask you whether it's going to be once three times or forever forever means it's going to loop and loop and loop like a gif or gif file right so that's what you see in memes and so on, right? So every time that you see any GIF, this is how it goes with forever, right? You've got other options. You can tap on it and you can, you know, always set your loop counts. How many times you want it to loop or uh, you want to have a specific timeline, like, yeah? So if you place only once or if you place multiple times, it totally depends on how 
you are uh, you know you want it to play all right so that's that on the loop uh, count right uh, beside that is the play buttons and so so as you can see one is to move forward and one is to move backwards right so which means forward and rewind okay like how you see on a uh, normal player right play is play and then you've got the motion uh, what they call motion blur for each and every tweening so we'll talk about this later so you've got the plus button which is very very important this is where you create an each and every layer of pages yeah so different layers will give you a different uh, options for you to move the uh, objects around or whether you want to draw something that is going to be abstract and so forth today we're, we're going to have a little fun with it yeah so plus will be the one that you'll be clicking on and then you've got a pin whereby you can delete each and every uh, you know layers and so on the timeline as well as from the layer here right so that's the basic uh, you know UI elements that you see in within the timeline window and at the burger you know this uh, tiny little button here the icon at the right where my cursor is yeah once you tap this you will see there will be options for the timeline so number one it's it says new frame copy frame so this is practically is frame means within the timeline so each and new uh, you know new frame that it will create a new layer so in that manner it is easier for you to animate so this will come handy once you start practicing just to understand first i'm just explaining number one and then as we practice you will get more used to it all right so here uh, you've got delete frame delete animation and so on and yeah, for now uh, ignore this we'll talk about this even further as we go go further all right you've got optimize animation and so all right so here what you can see is uh, there is two options create new layer for each new frame and then you've got new layers visible in all frame so um, normally this two is either uh, one I will check on the create new layer whereas the new layer visible in all frames this one I will uncheck it so the reason why I'm doing this is I want to hide the previous pages and so all right so we'll talk about this even further once you practice it all right so convert to timeline uh, ignore all the other stuff for now right so these are the options given so these are settings here so that is that on the timeline all right so without further ado so let's start okay as you have created a new uh by frame yeah this is what will Will appear in your canvas uh, and in the document here working space so you've got the background which is locked as default right and then you've got layers that you can add on to it all right so layers is layers uh, frame is frame two separate things all right so do not get confused uh. the number one is we have to set the base so if you want to have a simple bouncing ball you have to know where your ground is going to be right so before we start anything number one we want to create a brand new layer and call it as a floor right so what we'll do in here is we'll make the draw size uh, the brush size slightly smaller by tapping on the open and close bracket or you can go to brush settings and you can decrease the size of your brush right right once you have decreased this uh, depending how thick you want your brush size is uh, to be right one you want to have a floor normally i'll go with either black color or any color it doesn't really matter depend on depending on the preferences i will just hold shift place my cursor wherever i want it to be so something close by to the one you know a quarter of your canvas from the bottom so say somewhere around here perhaps so this will be the floor right one single line by holding shift and just dragging the line to have a straight line 
and that's it right so this will be the fundamental or the floor where the bouncing ball is going to drop right okay so uh, once you have done this um, secondly you have to lock this floor so that you do not draw on top of it it becomes a guide so one way is you can do with this uh, line or you can even use a ruler to just give a guide but I'm just going to use a line All right so uh, in here I will also create a brand new layer All right this layer will be called as frame one or I will just name it or just leave it as it is or I'll just delete this All right I'm just gonna hit on plus here it will state it as a frame two All right so your frame two here what happens is as you can see it will you know it will create a brand new layer right on top of it and this is where you can choose any round brushes or any brush that you have here we're going to use a simple round brush default brush i'm going to increase the size so that i can get a nice little ball right i'm going to go to a red color of something that is bright color yeah i'm going to make it slightly bigger or something like this yeah i'm going to start with the first frame okay so first is you want to know where it is initiating so where is it going to start and it's going to be bouncing right straight here on uh, like a ping, -pong, a ping pong ball when you drop a ball it's just on uh, one single vertically you know bouncing ball it is not going to move or bounce towards the right or left but depending we'll do that later for now we will look at how the ball is going to bounce from the top yeah and hitting the ground and bouncing back to the uh, you know to the ceiling and then dropping back to the ground and slowing down and so on yeah very simple yeah I'm gonna hit on the you know, first initial set so here I'm gonna hit on top point it is gonna drop from here I'm gonna hit second layer right so second layer this is what we call as key yeah key frames so it is going to drop right down to the bottom Oop. all right you can hold shift and then you can uh, you know, do the line here or you can hit ctrl r, r or command r to get the straight line so for now because we are doing a demo it really doesn't matter to have it really you know straight we're just going to do an approximate idea of how is it going to be animated so if you go to the first frame nothing it drops it's starting to drop and then it comes into the screen and it drops to the ground and then it is going to bounce back okay because there is an inertia and there is a force right so there's a gravitational force that it's happening and then eventually it's going to start having a bounce so if you want to have the next stage where it's going to bounce it back here so all you have to do is tap once okay so what what happens here if you play through this this is what it's going to play the so first frame second frame and so on so if you want to have it to be seen only in single object all you have to do i'm just going to go with three frames huh? all you have to do is the frame 4 anything below frame 4 will be hidden right? okay except for the floor right in frame 3 i only need frame 3 to be visible and frame 2 to be invisible at frame 1 i only need to have frame 2 to be visible all right now frame 2 okay so if you play now or by hitting on your spacebar it bounces pretty simple right so this is how you initiate your animation so you get the point yeah so nothing here nothing appears in the first frame second frame it will be visible within the screen and third frame it is going to be hitting the ground and fourth frame it is going to bounce and then maybe the fifth frame you can also keep 
the fourth frame is still visible just to give you an indication hey this is gonna be uh, this is where it is been placed and I'm just gonna click on the positioning of the fifth frame ball right so I'm just gonna hide the fourth frame now if I play this is what will happen so now it is moving super fast right so it is going super fast that is just bouncing like you know it's just you know flickering yeah you want to have more of this motion to be a little smoother so if you were to have more smoother animation in between all you now have to do is you have to add in betweens right so say for instance within frame 2 and frame 3 right you want to have a little motion or uh, if you want to have a simple motion all you have to do is select both these frames frame 2 and 3 and hit on the motion blur or tweening yeah so this tweening will give you or will have a couple of additions yeah in betweens so that the motion becomes a little bit more smoother rather than uh, flipping from one position to another very fast or in a very abrupt manner right here you can look at you know at five frames you know for it to just travel from the initial position to the end of its position if let's say it's five then it's five you can increase the number do not have multiple or two huge uh, you know frames so just say with five frame will do yeah five or three yeah depending the more frame it is the more slower it becomes the motion becomes smaller uh, slower the lesser the frames is the faster the motion becomes so it's very simple We'll try to digest this first and then eventually we will do more. Right? Say five frames for it to drop up, for it to drop down to the floor. Maybe you want to have about three frames. Right? All you have to do is press OK. Now you will see there's an additional frame in between. Yeah? So if you play now, see that? So the motion becomes slightly more softer that though it is still flickering but there is a tweening in between right so of course when there is a bounce right so this is where what happens is it becomes a little blurrier and then hitting on the frame 5 right and this is where you will start adding more in between frame 5 and 6 tap on this more uh, tweening again and you can increase it to you know to double at about six frames perhaps and press ok now as you can see the frames become more and more and more so this is common in any animation field as you can see, see that so it it pauses now one is because five and six it is pretty much changing the transition which is you know it's the same position it's just you know the opacity becomes 100 frame 5 it is still in between okay so maybe 6 and 7 perhaps and then add the frames in between so check first that's okay just tap on each frame to see oh there's a uh, you know there's a change of position right so six and seven there's a little change of position so it needs a little bit more um, you know frames in between but this is where you can add six or seven frames in between and now when you play as you can see boom, and then it drops right so this is not a perfect animation as you can see of course there are varieties of uh, you know the varieties of methods of doing this you can draw this you can do it in different platform like animate and so but to do a quick form of animation this is how you do it in photoshop right so the frames can be add on and so as you move, move along you can even shift things and you can even 
copy this and paste it elsewhere right so if you were to copy this you can you know tap on this or you can uh, yeah you can come in here copy frame and then press number you know press a number of frame here add in and then you can go in click on this drop down menu here and paste frame see that paste after selection or paste over selection and so on okay so this is what it happens it copies the entire thing and then paste it over and so on. so here is where you can play around with all the additions of framing okay so very simple this is a simple bouncing ball of course the bouncing balls if you want to have uh, you know very smooth lines of uh, you know, bouncing and so definitely the more frames will have a better transition in between and give you a smoother motion All right so this is the most simplest way of doing an animation All right with this understanding now say if you can't see the animation moving really well let's do another bouncing ball which goes on a simple rhythmic manner from right to left or left to right right so let's just close this or you can delete all this frame by selecting holding shift tap on one particular frame and hold shift to the uh, in the second frame and you can go into this bin and delete this come in here I'm going to delete this back again I'm going to maintain the floor now I'm going to start doing a bouncing ball that comes enters the frame so treat this as a screen yeah a ball is bouncing from the left to right and it slowly recites its move. okay so each I'm not going to look I'm not going to go thoroughly into the principles of animation this is just to give you an overview of what you can do all right okay let's begin then so here I'm going to start with a uh, frame 2 again I'm going to just place it is going to kind of place my initial positioning of the ball right so it's going to come from here or it's going to drop down from top somebody is just throwing a ball a ping pong ball perhaps I'm just going to position it here one all right I'm going to add another one more frame so it's going to drop two add another one more frame three okay it's going to come very hard and then because it's hitting the ground with a force it is going to take away the strength and it is going to slow down a little bit all right okay. five I'm gonna land it and then frame six it is gonna move outwards over here something like this okay let's play and see okay so this is something that is gonna be like uh, it is not gonna show you any motions of bouncing it is just gonna go in and just show you hey this is how it is going to be flickering like how lights are on okay so if you want to have in between now you can go in and first hide all the layers that it does not need to see the ball that is here. I mean that has been drawn previously I'm just going to go in here I'm going to hide first so that I get the exact location or random location of the ball and then i'm going to hide the rest of it along the way so number five here as you can see it is eating up so you can use the move tool and you can move it upwards and so on. so now if you were to play can you see right this will only happen when you of the or hide the frames below the uh, you know the newly created frames make sense yeah so it is only reading one page at a time or one frame at a time so somehow it creates an illusion like as if it is bouncing okay 
so if you want to have in between here from this to this you want to have a little motion or if you want to change this to something else or you want to you know uh, get it stuck on the ground so this can be altered along the way okay so that is a, another a method of doing or you have to do a little uh, you know, studies on timing and so right so in between here first frame I'll treat number two as first frame huh? yeah frame two and frame three in between these two yeah so it is going to drop the speed is pretty much okay here so let's play and see boom, boom, boom. all right and then maybe you want to have you want to have a little slowdown in between three and four yeah this is where you can add maybe about uh, five frames six frames or five frames like yeah okay so now as you can see all right so it kind of like slows down don't worry if you want to undo it you can undo first right again you can add on frames maybe about three frames let's not go too much right so it's not too slow okay so three four five six. okay so you can add on and on and on and on so i'm going to undo this you've got six frames let's go back again it depends on your creativity lah. I yeah. have how do you want to add it and so okay so, okay so now if let's say I want to have in between one way of doing you know this already if you want to have training in between you can add on to the training you can try this out or if you want to do it manually each one so first is to get the initial key pose where it's going to land that's gonna you know, bounce and then where it's gonna land again it's gonna decide and then it's gonna land okay so there's uh, three states that it's gonna change so say in between here you want to have manually adding a frame all you have to do is tap in and create a new frame okay so here it is creating a new frame all you have to do is bring this frame Can, you can actually draw something so B I'm gonna hit on this too okay see this point okay so what happens here right I'm gonna hide number two see that right what you can do is you can name this as you can see frame 3 frame 3 is repeating back again all you can do is you can underscore and name it as in between or stretch Bam. so in this stretch all you have to do is control T yeah you can now either squash it as such or you can rotate it to this angle use hold shift and do this squash it in this manner so and press enter and now if you play see that one two three so it is gonna move further so when it moves faster in front it is gonna have a little change of its shape because there is a gravitational pull yeah and uh, it has gonna you know it's gonna when there is a gravitational pull definitely there's a little bit of distortion you want to create that kind of illusion go back to number four and add another one and this is where number five it's going to create a brand new frame now tap on this maybe you can have it as squash okay this time control t or create a brand new uh, what they call brand new uh, ball here hide the number three boom yeah I'm gonna come into number five here I'm gonna do control T control T 
and hold shift and I'm going to squash it as such. Enter and now if I play, okay, so as you can see, the motion becomes even more nicer. See the motion bit, uh, before and after, so it becomes a little bit more realistic in terms of its movement. Okay, so these are the simple stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm, we are not going to do specific like how it is going to be stretched and caused according to the angles and so, but we are just going to play around with this so that you can, you know, understand the principles, the basic principles first, right? There's more towards it. You can look at the video that I've shared. Yeah, there's 12 principles to it. You've got the timing, you've got the stage, you've got the exaggeration, stretch and squash. You just name it. Yeah, the list of stuff there. Uh, yeah, and uh, in between uh, key frames, post to pose, and so on. So, all that is and uh, it is taken into consideration to create a super beautiful motion. And this is how an animation is created in traditional method and it can now be passed on to you know uh, photoshop and so so when you are doing cinema graph later or if you're doing a motion poster you can use these terms right this is the simple stuff to do right so say you want to have a little fun right you've got this going just think about stretch and squash this more than enough yeah so i'm going to have it squashed here I'm going to take off, yeah, so it's going to come in, drop, hit, or maybe I can shift 5 and 4, so it, you know, it gets squashed first, as you can point, okay, so it, it will fall on the floor, and then it kind of like takes off, where it is changing its, uh, you know, it's coming, retaining back its uh, form, and then pushing to the next next which you can duplicate this you can come in here you can copy this and so on or I'll just do a brand new frame add another one yeah frame number seven so this is where you can move or you can actually add in use a brush you can just tap in somewhere here blop yeah and hide frame four Control T again, rotate this according to its angle. So you want to see this nice little arch, yeah. And then you just have to hold shift and squash it in this manner, point or holding shift and alt together, point and press enter. And now you can see, okay, shift this six and seven together, boom, boom, right. Number seven here, you can move further away. Okay, seven, six, seven. You can hide lah, yeah, either one of it. Yeah, you can move further, further away. It goes like. Okay. So those kind of things that you can do with a simple bounce yeah so this is very simple bounce yeah i'm not going to go detail it up and so right so this is what you get okay once you have done or say you have approximately got your motion here running yeah bouncing ball with this understanding say for instance you want to do you know you want to do something wicked and you want to have a little bit more fun so go to each and every frame here okay if you tap on it you will see the visibility here yeah? so you tap on each and every frame here it will try to locate which frame that you have to work on right it, the visibility will be on huh? say number number three here you want to have a little bit of you know lines or speed lines or something like that okay just gonna add in a little blue line and this time you just go in and create go back to a brush this time maybe perhaps you can use a soft brush or you can even reduce the size of it okay 
and say you want to have something here one one two three four don't go you know uh, just be careful with this yeah say something like this don't add overly complex motion yeah? say number three come in here it has a little bit of you know uh, legs that is popping out and then coming to this maybe kind of like squashes so you go like Whoa. come on come here like a spider one two three see something like this All right so as you can see boom boom it falls and then number six frame three it stands up All right and frame seven he flies okay if it has six legs or eight legs and eight legs yeah fine, fine, fine. okay come into the part one just care constantly add on and this time he goes like Ooh. one two three four five six yeah maybe one okay and then he drops back again frame five one two three four five six maybe seven or no, eight yeah and then he flies back frame six something like that right so let's play cool eh right so you can have something like this to add on yeah so again if it's uh, six legs then go with six legs like yeah so here number three you have this stretch perhaps another two more spider-man okay so this is what you can do with a simple animation okay you can have multiple stuff within this you can even have like you know number of first frame uh, say number two you go like it goes ooh, one two It's gonna land, it's gonna jump, and it's gonna kind of like you know sway things around and so on. Yeah, so this is a very spontaneous animation method. All right, there's a lot more stuff that we can do with a simple you know movement of uh, segments or limbs or yeah, sets, I would say. Yeah, that we can move on and uh, animate. But this is just to give you an, a little understanding of how the animation works, right? So with this here, you can create, start creating a story. You know, you get the spiders are gonna, gonna jump into the, the ground. So perhaps maybe around here, you can even have more and more animation to add on to this. All you have to do is go in, group this first. This becomes one group, yeah. So you can call it as spider right? yeah spiders inside here okay so it will refer to this and then you can have another background on top of this maybe you want to color something da 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 or you can even add and add and add more frames in between all right say for instance you want to have the frames behind this say frame two frame one okay, nothing is playing okay Nothing is playing because the spider, the frame is the, I mean, the folder is off. Huh? Okay, the folder is off and it is not reading it properly because everything else has been, you know, changed to this uh, folder. So actually, you shouldn't do a grouping by mistake. Yeah, leave it as a frame. You have to convert it to a, uh, a timeline. Then only you get the whole thing as one particular animation as such. Okay, so this is how you have to 
play with the basic timeline so if you want to have more in betweens in uh, in betweens or you want to have other stuff like for instance you want to have like a spider uh, i mean butterfly and so here you can go go in and start adding in the animations or frames in between so number two here a butterfly one uh, butterfly goes in and create a brand new frame so say where is it to look at this happens because we have already I know um, we have grouped it and came back to this uh, we have undo the grouping and so that's why it becomes like this okay we have to on back the whole thing and then start looking at where it's going to be I'm not seeing the butterfly and so we come in here maybe third one you don't see this yeah of this and then add on another frame and this time the butterfly flies flies away so let's see see that point 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 so you can have more fun you can have it as an explosive and so on so first thing is uh, the idea here is for you to get the understanding of a simple animation that you can go through right so this is something fun to play with yeah something that you can draw if you have a digital i mean a drawing tablet that'd be great you can do frame by frame or if you uh, want to have more in between and so uh, you can you know you can explore on this and see understand the mechanism first before we get into the cinema graph method right um yeah that's on the simple animation that you guys can look at any questions so far everyone understand Happy Dopey? Oh, if, if 40 frames, 40 frames and so, what happens is it becomes, the file becomes larger, right? So the advice is when you're working with uh, Photoshop, right? you guys have to be careful yeah so in photoshop try not to go super high or too many frames yeah uh, 40 frames per second meaning there's 40 frames of motion yeah 40 pages yeah of drawing per second so per second is you know it it has to run 40 you know 40 runs of motion yeah then it change i uh, mean that only it is calculated as one second cycle am i making sense yeah so try to be careful i mean try to be careful with you know 40 to 60 frame and so on usually more, yeah that is 40 and 60 frames that is when you are looking at animate okay in here if you are going to look at 40 frames per second and so it is not suitable you can do it but you have to add more and more and more i'm making sense so here you go in you can optimize this yeah um you have to add in more so which means you have to go into a uh, video timeline and then change the um you know timeline or the panel options panel options is to see the thumbnails huh? right so you go in here you have to change the uh number of uh, you know playback time and so on yeah but normally this is not advisable right an example would be if i'm going to do in between here okay say this is all my key motion right so this is the animation that you're looking at okay so when you have 40 frames and so if it's uh if it's a 3d animation then it's great whenever you guys are doing 2d animation 
maximum is you're going to go at 12 frames per second got it unless you are looking at uh, tune boom there's another software called tune boom and so then of course it's going to have you give you a different frame rate and so right so normally for 2d animation if it's 60 frames and 40 frames there's a lot of motion so uh, end of the day it's about timing eh? how much or how long is it going to you know from one pose one key pose say for instance example uh, it is jumping into the scene if this uh, what they call the spider is jumping here coming into the scene and landing on the ground if this one if you want to have like uh, you know 40 frames per second but you're gonna cry yeah 40 frames per second doesn't mean that it's uh, you're gonna have you know 40 animation in between so you have to of course calculate how long is it transiting and how fast it's gonna be that's why timing comes in yeah though it is playback time which means it is reading everything within uh, you know that 40 frame timeline or you know frame rate it is looking at so the frame rate which means it's refreshing every 60 of uh, you know every 60 frames it will calculate as one second and every 40 it becomes our second and so yeah so it doesn't mean that you have to have uh, not only one particular motion it can have multiple motions within that 60 frames am i making sense it is just that it is playback in such manner okay this if you want to know more of course i have to run an animation class for this specifically but here we are not looking at 40 frames and 60 frames per second for now yeah in games you're looking at 60 frames it is smoother you know 40 frames it is smoother normally it's 50 30 24 25 all right so these are the common frame rates or playback time that it plays so that you know when it broadcasts or when it plays on a video and so on it becomes a smooth playing motion am i making sense yeah see it uh, you know if there is no or lesser frame rate say eight frame in um in your playback time yeah though you're working with eight frames or 12 frames or four frames or one fr uh, no, two frames or three frames it doesn't matter yeah if let's say eight frames yeah so it is about motion if you're moving like this if you look at my camera yeah, eight frames it will go like you know super jaggedy so it what what happens is it will add in between but if if i transit from one uh what they call one position to another in a very fast manner yeah then it will read all these motions within that uh you know 60 frames of uh, you know 40 frames of uh, you know playback time am i making sense yeah so it is a little tricky yeah uh, you have to go through the you know the entire course of an animation for you to know that for now let's look at this simple animation so i'm not going to run a full-blown animation class because that is separate okay so what you're going to do is you're going to do simple loop and as when you're playing as when you are doing like gif files like uh, you know all these memes and so you have this you know the eye is popping you know someone is having like two little you know rabbit ears that is popping and so on it's just looping you can't have 60 or 40 frames it doesn't work right more frames it becomes heavy right so normally is this much la. you leave it up to 24 or you know 12 frames maximum eight frames is the best okay yeah within 12 frames just play with this right gif files any more than this definitely it's going to be laggy am i making sense the heavier the file is the slower the playback is got it so normally if you're doing a full-blown animation for a for a cartoon or a shot and so then of course you're looking at a 
longer uh, you know bigger frame rates make sense yeah cinema graph and so you don't need to have such a long frame rate okay can hello yeah so say for instance if you wanted to i'll just show you an example um, of 24 frame rates now this is an example what you can do if you know animation this is in the future not that for now huh? yeah so let me be very clear so if you want to do something like this uh, i'll just show you guys Bam. this is a loop can you see there's an animation this is 24 frames per second okay and by the way this is not being done in uh, or the motion is not done in Photoshop it is done in uh, what they call uh, after effects okay so there's two different things that you can look at like this you see birds are flying and all that so all these birds and flying and so this will be a you know a separate file right will be edited so yeah all this is made by me yeah so this is another level of doing uh, dealing with photoshop and other softwares got it yeah okay another sample uh, if you guys want to see now let me check if i have it here okay so something like that i want to just reduce the volume say the whole thing yeah when i was working with this i was uh, not directing the whole thing right so if you were to do this motion this is a 2d animation yes this will be done in 24 frames or 30 frames this is 30 frames okay simple motion tweening and so on it's just a trailer yeah uh, there's a lot of things that is involved within this yeah, i can't explain it within this short time period but can you see if you were to ask about animation this is what you can do with another uh, 30 frames 40 frames and so so there will be multiple motions in between and when it's 30 frames or 60 frames in between the tweening will be nicer okay the stretch of the tweenings will be nicer right uh, if you guys want to check out this game i mean it's been done in 2013 2014 yeah so it's on steam anyways uh i'm not yeah, you can have a look at this masquerade. The bubbles of doom is done in Malaysia. I uh, was art directing the whole thing. A little promotion on this. So if you guys want to check it out, you can do the play the game. Yep. Okay. So uh, yeah, so simple today. Let's keep it very simple. Play with the timeline and try to get this simple bouncing ball for you to understand the fundamental first. Right? You don't need to go through every single uh, you know, principles and animation. Yes, I will post this. Uh, which video you are talking about? The recording, right? Yes, I will post this uh, right after the class. Once I finish uploading. Yeah? You can have a look at this. Okay? I will also post the PSU, the working file, for you guys to have a look. Yeah? So you kind of like get a rough idea how this timeline works okay cool so that's it folks for today uh, try it out keep it simple let's not over complicate ourselves yeah and we'll talk about further uh, on how to create you know uh, twin motions and so or uh, animation clips and so later coming next week
right so thank you folks i will stop the recording right now